Hi everybody, my name is Kim and this is something new for me. The purpose of this is to document my journey and excitement and preparation for the cruise coming up in 90 days. We have decided to go on Symphony of the Seas, which is a Royal Caribbean ship. It's their latest ship, I believe, and it's considered the largest cruise ship in the world. And I think it's around 5,488 passengers and 2,200 some crew members. That's a lot of people. Um, we've been on cruises before. We've been on two Disney cruise. One was a three night, one was a five night down in the Caribbean, Bahamas area. And I went on an Alaskan cruise on Holland America with my mom. We are so excited, but it's a little bittersweet because this might be our last big vacation together as a family because my oldest graduating from high school this year, going off to college next year. We wanted to make sure that this was a memorable, exciting, not boring for the teenagers in any way. So my oldest is 17. His name is Ethan and my youngest is 13. Her name is Lauren. We wanted to make sure that we picked a cruise that was in the top 10 list for teenagers. This was on the list. We got lucky. We were able to find adjoining balcony ocean view rooms. The reason for that is because I did not think that full grown human beings should spend seven nights sleeping on a couch and for four large human beings to share one bathroom, one toilet, one sink, one shower. No, thank you. That is not vacation to me. So having adjoining rooms is definitely a plus. We had looked into one other cruise at the same week in our timing parameters and they did not have any unobstructed views left for, for staterooms and having a balcony was very important to me. Um, also just like the peace and quiet and the alone time that you can get on a balcony. Um, so they had to upgrade us to a suite. It was almost $10,000. To be on a suite and the, the square footage of the room is not that much bigger than a regular stateroom. And while it was a little bigger, you still had one bathroom, one toilet, one shower, one large bed, and the other two grown human beings have to sleep on the couch. So for a little more money than that suite, we have two rooms adjacent. <sighs> Thank goodness. Totally worth it, I believe. Now, when the kids were little, there was no problem, especially with the Disney, they, it comes down from the ceiling. It worked out really nicely. The thing we're still trying to figure out is should we get trip insurance or not? For two rooms, it's $355. Oh, I would hate it if something happened and we lost all that money. I don't know, what do you think? Should we keep the trip insurance, $355? Another question I have, does everybody get passports for their kids? I know you can use birth certificates. Okay, so somebody gets hurt really bad, they're at the hospital, they only have their birth certificates. It's not like we're gonna leave them there alone. One of us is gonna be with them. We have passports. Wouldn't that make it okay? I don't know, that's one of my questions. But anyway, um, sorry for the boring stuff. So in preparation for th this trip, I have been online so many hours researching and trying to figure out the amazingness of this ship. It's big, it's really big, and it's gonna be very crowded. It's a holiday cruise. We're gonna be on this ship for Christmas. So I've been online incessantly trying to plan this trip and trying to research all the excursions.
I'm just trying to find out what time of day should we plan to eat? When are the shows gonna be? Trying to find old cruise compasses. So I, I read a lot of Facebook posts from people who are currently cruising, who have been on the cruise, just trying to ask questions and find out how, how do you make the most out of your time? Everything on Symphony of the Seas needs a reservation. Um, they don't re recommend that you make any decision last minute because you will be standing in line or probably won't get a seat. As much as I don't want to have to schedule every minute, I feel like I'm scheduling every minute because I don't want to miss out in case we do decide to do those things. Now dining, what we decided to do is dine on the early side. So between 6, 6.30 is when we start, done by 8, 8.30. And then the show that starts later at night, like around nine o'clock. We will see that show in the evening. So when we're at port and we get back to the ship, we have time to change our clothes and before the six o'clock dining time. Now the other concern I have is how can we be in contact with each other on the ship? Can we text each other without having to pay $210 for all four of our devices to be online on Wi-Fi at the same time? Two teenagers running free on the ship, I'm all for it. But when it comes time to checking in with each other and making plans, I cannot expect everybody to run back to the room and see if I left a note. Like that's not practical. Everyone's gonna have their phone. Why not text each other? So I've been looking into what does Royal Caribbean have for staying in touch with your loved ones. There used to be an app called IQ and perhaps it still works on some ships. I don't know if it works on Sym Symphony of the Seas. So my question to him was, does Symphony of the Sea have an option of texting each other through an app without paying for the Wi-Fi? He said yes. He said it's through the IQ, which I think he meant is the new app, which is the Royal, and that when you're on the ship, you're going to see these three little dots in the right-hand corner, and you're going to be connected to the Wi-Fi Royal internet. and you're gonna be able to hook up to other people in your party for $7.95 per device. So I'm researching who's doing this. I'm going on all the Facebooks, I'm going on all of the blogs, and a lot of people say it's not working. A lot of people say that it's not even on Symphony of the Seas at all, and that the ship that it was on, on Allure, that it was spotty, it was not consistent. The problem is, is that we're on our phones so much of the time that if we spend $210, all that's going to encourage us to do is be on our phones on the cruise. We don't want to be on our phones on the cruise for seven days, spending all this money when there's so much to do on the boat. We don't want to be on our devices. But I need to be able to get in contact with every member of my family for sure. No questions, no possible snafus with that. $210, is it worth it? Or should I take the chance to have a text option for either free or for $7.95 per device? That's my dilemma. I won't know the best answer to that until it's possibly too late to have the discount for the Wi-Fi. Right now it's $30 per day for four devices. $210. That's supposedly a discount. If I wait to do it on the ship, it could be 30% more than that, or more. I'm not too excited about taking a chance. I'm also not excited about spending $210 and inviting my family to be on their devices the whole cruise. So I talked to my daughter just a little bit and I said, well, if we do the Wi-Fi package, we can have a pact. Like I have this parenting control app that can actually turn things off on their devices. They hate it. But she agreed that I can actually take off anything that I don't want her to use on her phone. Perhaps I would consider an hour at night, an hour in the morning, 
just to catch up with the news, catch up with friends, catch up with Snapchat, streaks. Most of you might know what that means. I hardly know what that means, but it's important to my daughter. So I'm considering it. Okay, another thing that we are deciding to do is to get the deluxe drink package. I'm not sure that it's a good idea. Bottled water. We have a whole house water filter in our house. We have a fridge filter on top of that. I don't drink tap water. Cruise tap water seems like it might be even worse than the tap water that I already don't drink. Bottles of water on the ship are $3 per bottle, and they're, they're not the big ones. So then there's smoothies. They serve smoothies on the ship, probably $8, $10 per smoothie. Fresh juice, you want fresh squeezed orange juice, or like a carrot juice at the spa or whatever, probably six, eight dollars. Want a glass of wine with dinner, $12, $14. Want another glass of something when you're sitting next to the pool? I calculated that by the end of the, oh, coffees, specialty coffees, I figured that we would be spending at least $128 per day on drinks. Black coffee, decaf coffee, dispensable lemonade or orange juice at breakfast, milk, chocolate milk, and little boxed drinks. I'm sorry, I'm a snob. Okay, now there is one more thing that I will spend money on on top of a beverage package and that is at Starbucks. There is a Starbucks on this cruise, a for real Starbucks. You can use your app and scan your barcode at Starbucks. Just make sure you have enough money loaded on the app so that you don't run out. That's another reason to have Wi-Fi, is so you can reload your Starbucks card while on the ship. 